And one of the most iconic images was the Eagle Nebula. Mm. Right. Talk us through these two images. Yeah, so I love hearing all the oohs and ahs from the audience. You're the best audience ever. Okay, so we're looking at this beautiful area of star birth, right? These tall column, columns of gas and dust. It, they're just teeming with new baby stars that are being formed. And then you can see on the Hubble image, which is a relatively deep left. image on the left, right? You can see that there's really a dearth of stars. You can see where those clumps of gas and dust, where those stellar nurseries are, are kind of, they look almost like attached and really kind of connected. And then you look on that same field of view from the James Webb Space Telescope, and what are you seeing? Like, it's sparkling with stars, right? You can capture all of that sparkling amazingness. And then you're also starting to see that there are, like, little newborn stars. Those are some of those really bright red patches that you can see as well. And again, now you're seeing more about the inherent structure of those tall pillars and gas and dust where the stars are forming, and the population of stars around them, because stars may be born in a nursery together, but then they kind of grow up and go out on their way. And you're kind of seeing some of that happen, which is, I think, pretty awesome. And so why is infrared good for that? Because infrared is like being able to see through things, right? It's kind of like, well, I can't use the x-ray analogy because I'm going to use that later, but it's about being able to peer through in a very different way and capture an entirely different kind of phenomena type, which is lovely. So Hubble could not see into this gas cloud, right. so it looked like there's not much there. 